What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the MG Cup Series, and welcome back to Atlanta Motor Speedway, the home of the MG Cup Series, here from Hampton, Georgia. Getting ready to kick things off here tonight at our second race at this track this season from Atlanta Motor Speedway. 43 cars ready to rip it around here, and man, this is usually one of the more chaotic and exciting events on the schedule no matter which race it is just this track in general it's just chaotic and also has some exciting racing cars two three sometimes four wide before disaster strikes but man things are gonna get good here because unlike most tracks even after a big wreck happens they usually start to pack pack it back up this track, winning at this track is so important to these drivers, and man, it gets really crazy around here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. But Greg Biffle, your pole sitter, with Tony Stewart starting in second. Behind them, Rusty Wallace, your points leader. The 19 of Jeremy Mayfield with a great starting position in fourth here today, or here tonight. Rounding out your top five is the 48 of Jimmy Johnson, and next to him, starting sixth, is the 12 of Ryan Newman. Here we go, green flag in the air for the first time here tonight. We're rolling here from Atlanta Motor Speedway, the outside line. Tony Stewart specifically did not get a great restart there. The entire outside line gets held up, and here comes Rusty Wallace to take second away and possibly go to the lead here on lap one. How about Jimmy Johnson right behind him? He's going to pull out and try to make that move. Down the, in the turn three for the first time here today. about this cars everywhere this Greg Biffle leads the first lap and a little bit of I heard some contact towards the back it looks like somebody got up into the outside wall a little bit oh there we go hard crash into the inside wall for the 8 the 01 of Joe Nemechek and that's gonna bring out the caution a head-on hit for Joe Nemechek Four wide across the stripe. But they somehow make it out a lot. Never mind. There goes Kurt Busch up into the outside wall. With J uh, Jamie McMurray. Man, Kurt cannot catch a break this season. The only Roush driver to not win a race so far this season is Kurt Busch. And man, that was a really tough break for him there. Let's watch the 0-1 of Joe Nemechek here. See what... Right out the yellow. Three wide here off the turn two. Oh, contact with Kyle Bush and then bank. Oh, man, that was a really hard impact off the safer barrier there on the inside wall. Thank goodness that was safer barrier and not just concrete. Because, man, that was a really hard impact as those two went straight down to the bottom of the track. And Nemechek noses it in. Hard, hard hit. There's so much grip that when these cars get turned sideways for the first few seconds, they start to accelerate a little bit um, when they stay in the throttle. And man, that's just kind of what happened. Nemechek's car gained some speed heading towards the wall before finally losing some, but not much. Didn't get much time to scrub off speed. Because Hello Wall absolutely ate the inside wall. So did Dale Jr. Chris Mack goes way down to the apron trying to avoid it. Not taking any chances here at his home track. Side by side of the stripe wreck. But Fool did lead the race back to the caution flag. Let's go ahead and get things back underway. Green flag back in the air from Atlanta Motor Speedway. We're rolling once again. Here we come, off of turn two. Down the back stretch. Got a little bit of a breakaway between the front. 
the lead pack and everybody else as Dale Jr. kind of held everybody up on the restart as he started one lap down at the front of the field. So the back half of the pack is bunched up. The front is bunched up. Contact around goes Jimmy Johnson hard into the outside wall with Michael Waltrip. Oh, big hits. Oh, they're piling in. Hard crash. And a big wreck on the front straightaway. It's going to take out a number of cars. Oh, they're still... Oh, my goodness. Jason Leffler got nailed by Dale Jr. there. Chris Mack pulls to a stop. It's going to roll through. Man, a violent wreck there. My goodness. Caution is out big time here today. It's Jimmy Johnson looks like he got into the back of of Kevin Harvick and that sends him up the racetrack and he slides collects Michael Waltrip they go into the outside wall head on into the safer barrier luckily not sure if these guys already took the yellow or not but then here comes the 32 of Bobby Hamilton stuck on the high side just nowhere to go as he crosses the line trying to get on the brakes it's too late 160 right into the door of Jimmy Johnson and then man I tell you what these drivers are okay but they're gonna be definitely feeling that for the rest of the week after this because man that was a violent accident watch this this is the worst part right here Jason Leffler got absolutely clobbered by Dale Jr. sent up in the air after a driver door impact. It's a miracle nobody got hurt in that. Actually, let's take a few more looks at it. Oh, Michael Walter got packed there by the 41 of Casey Mears who had nowhere to go. Let's take another look. Watch this. Oh, man. And then it gets worse. Much worse. But luckily though, a lot of cars were able to slow down for the most part and try to avoid it. Dale Jr. Not sure what he was doing. He's definitely getting suspended for that one because that could have been bad. Well, that's the, let's go ahead, look at the, drop for the green flag, Carl Edwards, your leader, trying to regain the points he lost to Rusty Wallace last week at Martinsville, in that absolute wreck fest, demo derby of a race contact, the round goes Ricky Rudd in front of the field, the big one is going to happen once again here on the restart, huge crash heading down into turn three, look at all these cars, they're still wrecking. In turns three and uh, turn three, and they're still hitting each other. Man, huge wreck on the restart, and another caution from Atlanta Motor Speedway. Greg Biffle, your leader. Ricky Rudd got turned in front of the back half of the field, and everybody back there, it seems, got collected. Man, what happened here? Oh, slid up. Oh. Just cleared himself, was not clear. Tried to come up in front of the 07 of Dave Blaney. And carnage. Chaos ensues. Watch this. Absolute melee here. Pandemonium on the back straightaway. Calamity. I mean, any word you want to use to describe it can fit. Because, man, that was absolute madness. Watch this. Oh. Then Sattler gets turned back up the track. Kyle Busch, and there was nowhere for these guys to go. And then everybody started sliding into it. And then they went down to the inside wall. <clears throat> it's like Dale Jarrett, I mean, Ricky Rudd down on power. A lap down, trying to uh, just make it through turns one and two. Look at Chris Mack down on the bottom. He sees this happening. He goes way down low. Hurries up, stays in the gas, shoots by it. He gets through without any contact. How about that for him there? Playing it safe and smart here today. As all these drivers go down to the inside wall. Let's uh, 
the red flag is out. Huge crash on the back stretch. Uh, let's take a look, another look at it here. So the first contact right here is what set things off. But watch this. Sattler spins back up across the racetrack. So does Kyle Busch. That blocks the track. And everybody up high that tried to get through it got collected. And there's Bobby Labonte making contact. He's going to slide down right into the 43. The 29 of Harvick. And then these guys up high. Oh, Ken Schrader almost made it through. He gets clipped. Goes head on into the outside wall. Luckily not too hard of an impact. He's going to collect Jeff Gordon and Jamie McMurray. I mean, cars are everywhere in a return three here. Let's go on board with Ricky Rudd, among others, or as well as others that were involved in this wreck here. Let me uh, go ahead. Let me go ahead and adjust the volume so we can get this good on board. And uh, let's go. So he's got cars behind him and just clears himself. Came up, wiped out the 07 along with most of the field. Another hit there. Man, I mean, that wreck wiped out a good chunk of cars. Let's watch the 38 of Elliott Sattler view in this. Oh, man. Almost made it by. Got door slammed and then bang. Everybody else comes sliding in. Man, cars absolutely everywhere. Dale Jarrett. I love how realistic this was, though. Anyway, uh, Dave Blaney had a whale of a run up top, as Dale Jr. Uh, as Daryl Walter would say. Not sure why I said Dale Jr. As good old DW would say, a whale of a run. But man, uh, a lot of cars, a lot of good cars taken out of this. Kyle Busch. Oh, that was a big impact into the outside wall. Slide down through the inside wall as well. Travis Quapple, who had a, his own bad wreck in, in the uh, first race this, wreck this year at this track. Was able to somewhat escape without severe damage. Most part, he didn't really get much out of that, so good on him. Uh, let's look at Bobby Labonte. Oh, that, that reminds me, Travis Quapo is your Texas winner, by the way. Like, I still can't believe that. Bobby Labonte. Man, he was like a ping pong ball in that one. Scott Wimmer. Oh man, look at, wow. Look at that. What a job of getting through. He's gonna get collected late. No, he doesn't. Wow, Moses moment. Am I right? I mean, shoot. He got on the brakes at the perfect moment. Didn't hit a single thing. Watch this. Can't touch this. Da -da -da -da. Oh my gosh! I mean, perfect wreck avoidance by Scott Wimmer there. He was, oh man. That, talk about lucky or what? I don't even know, man. Watch, here's Jeff Green's on board. Almost made it through. Here comes Kyle Busch. And then here comes everybody else. And they were still wrecking down in the turn one. Martin Truex Jr. should have an interesting view of this. Oh man, he couldn't see. Ran right into the 21. Now, here's the angle I want to see. The 86, I need to see his on board. Chris Mack, what did he see in all of this? Got a big run here. Takes it to the inside. Sees him wrecking. Stays in the gas. Shoots by on the bottom. Perfect wreck avoidance there. And he stayed in it. Gained up ton of spots off of that as well he's up inside the top 10 now he was like 
just outside the top 25 when that happened and worked his way up inside the top 10 after it so some craziness happening here from Atlanta Motor Speedway that's just how it is with this package oh man look at Jamie Murray's car the nose crunched in on that one lots of cars done for today after that one we're gonna get things back rolling here green flag back in the air Chris Mack is now in third place after a few drivers have pitted for some reason Mac just kind of seems to be cruising around a little bit here. Doesn't seem to really be pushing too hard to try to get to the lead here at his home track. Not sure if that's part of a, a strategy thing or what, but that 86 definitely not going as fast as it's capable of. Now that we've got a, a couple of laps under green, Carl Edwards looking to get to the lead. We're gonna take a, we're gonna click a few laps off just because. Uh, okay, never mind. I shouldn't have did that. Um, so we, we have a caution coming in a few laps, but I honestly, uh, okay, we're now. Uh, I honestly don't know what it was. Let's see what brought it out. Looks like it's the 24 of Jeff Gordon bringing out the caution flag. And it's getting a push from Chris Matt. Oh, up into the outside wall. Got pushed a little bit too hard there. And around he goes on the back stretch. Entering turn three. He's going to keep it down on the apron. Luckily, doesn't get any extra damage from that. Thank God everyone had a working brain, even Mike Wallace. Back over to radio, so apologizing profusely as he did not intend on wrecking that 24 car. You can imagine he feels absolutely horrible. Edwards trying to get back to the front and we're gonna have another long run so let's go ahead click a few laps off Chris Ma wait what happened to the back of the 86 what I'm confused wait a minute I'm actually like what huh did he get hit from behind under caution or what I'm confused Oh, on pit road. On pit road in his stall. Just trying to pull in. Couldn't quite get turned in. And then Terry Levani just turned right into his rear end. I'm not sure what that was all about. It looks like that might have been payback for his teammate. As Jeff Gordon and Terry Levani are Hendrick cars. And man. It looks like they told Terry to just run into the back of that 86. Give him some damage and take him out. Since uh, the 86 got into the back of the 24, sent him into the inside wall. It's got more damage to the. Wow, I cannot. Alright then. Anyways, uh, back to the green flag run that we have going on right now. Chris Mack still in the lead pack, fighting for. 
one of these top positions here. Oh, into the back of Greg Biffle. No. Another one bites the dust off the bumper. Chris Mack, this time he's going to get it worse. Hard crash. A huge hit right into the driver's door. And we got more coming in. Travis Quapple. Oh, and another one. That's Jeff Green in the 43. The 50 of Jimmy Spencer completely destroyed. So is Dave Blaney. A bad bump draft. Chris Mack there. Uh, so we're going to pretend the one with Jeff Gordon did not happen. Okay. That one never happened. That Y'all imagine that. He spun on his own. Um, that pit road thing was just random. But anyways. Uh, wow. I just can't believe what we just saw. Greg Biffle gets turned out of the lead. Off of a bad, a bad push. From the 86. I mean, bump drafting with these cars, I mean, you have to be really precise with it. And it looks like he just tried to get in. Oh, I don't even think he was trying to push him. I think he was just trying to get in behind that 16 car and tuck right in behind him. And just kind of misjudged it a little bit. Sent Biffle around. Biffle's going to go down the racetrack. Backs it into the inside wall. And then he's going to come back up the track. Excuse me, up the track. It goes hard into the outside wall there. Or not into the outside wall, but gets hit hard in the driver's door. And then the zero of Mike Bliss bounced off that 16 car, went head on into the outside wall hard. And then for some reason, Travis Quapple's down on the apron trying to avoid all this. That Sends Biffle up the track, ricochets Biffle up the track right into the path of the 50 that takes out the left front fender of the 50 car. Jimmy Spencer slides, and then he's going to hit the 77 as well. Quapple, oh my goodness, Quapple got up on his side there, almost flipped that 77 car over. Violent wreck. Oh seven, and then the forty three got got some late as well, and he slides hard into the fifty car. Heavy damage for all these guys. These guys further back kind of slowed down, worked their way by it. Chris Mack frustrated with himself over the radio. Did not mean to do that at all. He pits. He's going to drop to the back. And just kind of ride around back there. For now. Go ahead and take a few laps off. A few more. Because why not? They're saying to stop saving fuel because he's not going to be able to make it to the end. It's really unfortunate for Chris Mack. That strategy not going to work for them there. Oh, we got a crash entering turn three. That's the 97 of Kurt Bush. Look out, upside down. Goes Kurt, and he gets hit hard by Mike Wallace. And the, oh, another huge impact. Johnny Sauter upside down. How fast was Burton going when he hit him? Only about 120. Okay, thank God. I thought it was worse. I thought it was like 220. <laughs> but luckily it was only 120, y'all. Still hard impact, but definitely not as bad as it could have been. Now, how fast was Sauter going when he flew into this? Oh, man. Like, about 170. But luckily he hit him towards the left front rather than the driver's side door but man that 09 car caught 
got some momentum and rolled violently. Hard hits. Yeah, that's definitely a suspension for Sauter. Um, so Sauter and Junior getting suspended here. Um, what happened to the four of Mike Wallet? How did they get involved? Obviously, they were trying to go low. Was it a case of just nowhere to go? Yeah, the 97 just came down the track and just right into their path. They were going to make it through them if that didn't happen. But, man, that's a hard hit for the 37 as well. But that, that could have been avoided big time. Sauter should have been on the brakes for, like, quite a while at that point. Spotters have to say something. But anyways... Uh, I don't want to call that any in injuries for anybody because that was just kind of dumb. So we're not gonna we're not gonna put anybody on the injured list for that. But that was still bad. It helped Chris Mack though. Now he's got a chance to try to race for the lead here. After refueling, he's going to be able to make it to the end on fuel. And uh, let's just wait until they bunch up a little bit here. Chris Mack exiting pit road. They still didn't have enough fuel to make it to the end. So even after all that. Oh, and around he goes! Oh, and an end of the path of the 61. He's upside down. The hometown hero on his roof. And that's going to bring his day to an end. Trying to keep it rolling. It's not going to go anywhere. Just trying to pull it off the track. Tony Reigns, poor Reigns, man, had nowhere to go. This has been a weird race. I swear there's like a full moon out or something. Some may call it karma. I just call it a tough break for Chris Mack. But uh, there's not really many competitive cars left out on the track right now. So let's go ahead and jump forward a little bit. You hate for a race at a track that's known for producing such good races. You hate for a race to just be a disaster like this one has been so far. But obviously the aggression is up. Everybody's trying to uh, win before the season ends. How about Scott Wimmer up into the mix, though? Alright, four to go from Atlanta Motor Speedway. And quite a few cars with a shot at winning this thing, so that's nice to see. But they're all kind of single file because there's not too many cars to really help each other out. And nobody wants to really make a move and possibly lose spots because it is wrapped so everybody's just kind of cruising around now we got lap traffic slowing people down even more because apparently we don't know how to avoid a few lap cars so that's gonna that 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 does it gg's tony stewart good win um enjoy the trophy from atlanta motor speedway and yeah here comes car here here, here comes carl edwards though edwards coming with a little bit of a run now here comes Rusty Wallace, working his way through as well. Tony Stewart, and now Matt Kenseth. All right, now everybody's going to get by. Or at least they're going to try. And here comes Rusty Wallace to try to pass... His championship rival, Carl Edwards. White flag in the air. One more time around for Tony Stewart. Uh, GG's Tony, once again. Matt Kenza. That 17 car, what's he going to do? Can he try to make a move and get underneath the two of Rusty Wallace? No. He's not going to get there. Tony Stewart, though, is going to win from Atlanta Motor Speedway in a lackluster event to say the least um, but yeah not all of them can be great I guess 
But that's going to do it for uh, Atlanta. So let's go ahead and take a look at your point standings after this one. I don't even want to, you know what, first let me just delete the replay. I don't even want to see that replay anymore. That was just, no. The race was so bad, I'm not even counting injuries for it. Just, that was absolutely horrible. Uh, let's look at your championship uh, points standings. As we've got just three races left in the season. So how about that? But yeah, um, Rusty Wallace leads by 90 points over Carl Edwards, and Jimmy Johnson 280 points back. Sorry, it was stretching. Uh, yeah, Jimmy Johnson 280 points back. Um, not completely out of it, but he's gonna need Rusty and Carl to wreck out of every last race to have a shot at it. Then maybe he. Newman and Kenseth will also have a chance so I mean they're not completely out of it but it's really down to just Rusty Wallace and Carl Edwards at this point and if Jimmy Johnson's lucky enough maybe him and Newman can get up into, into the hunt for the championship but it's not very likely I don't see it happening Chris Mack after these last couple of rough races he's gonna he's Remember, he's got 79 extra points because I accidentally did one race not under the Chris Mack name. So let me just go ahead and add the 79 points to Chris Mack. 79 plus... How many points do I have again? Okay, 2544. Hold on, let me retype it. Or not... I have a calculator in my hand. Alright, that's 26,000, or no, that's 26, 23 points. So, that should really just put me up to, that. that's only gonna, it's not really gonna make much of a difference, just one extra spot. So, oh well, it is what it is. Anyways, um, yeah, it doesn't really matter that much, it just puts me ahead of a racist person. But, anyway, um, we're gonna, that's gonna do it for this one. Hope y'all enjoyed. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. Probably y'all probably didn't enjoy it. That race sucked, but you're, hopefully you'll enjoy the next couple of races. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. Uh, yeah, hope to see y'all next time. Until then, peace.